Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is my House of the Dragon Season 2 Top 10 WTF Predictions video, just like I used to do every season for the main Game of Thrones series. They've already explained some of their big plans for the future of the show and how they're adapting the story, and I'll be doing House of the Dragon videos during the offseason, just like I used to do for the main series, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. Careful for spoilers from everything from Season 1 if you haven't watched the show yet, but starting with number 1, the question on everyone's mind, like biggest question, when is House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 1 going to premiere? So here's the thing, there have been reliable reports they won't actually start filming Season 2 on location until almost March 2023. It takes over a year to turn a season around nowadays because of all the post-production and special effects that they have to do for all the big dragons and everything else, so it won't take quite as long as it took Season 1 to film because there were a bunch of extra delays during Season 1. But the other big thing is the Emmys. There are all these rules about when episodes have to air. Emmys are always a big thing for the Game of Thrones series. They won so many of them. HBO loves the Emmy Awards. Based on the new rules that they have, the entire run of Season 2 episodes, like Season 2 Episode 10, will have to finish before the Emmys cutoff date at the end of May, or the entire show won't be able to start till either June or later in the year. None of the Season 2 episodes can overlap between May and June, so like the entire season has to finish before the end of May, or it will all start after May. I think HBO would love to go back to airing the show in the spring like it used to for all the old seasons of Game of Thrones, but because it takes so long for them to film seasons now, they probably won't finish till a little bit later, meaning that they would probably hold the show till like July. In order for the show to air in the spring, it would have to start on March 26th, so set your clock by that. Either it'll start March 26th or it'll start in like July or around this same time next year that season one aired. Number two, House of the Dragon, the Dance of the Dragons, like the main event that the whole show is supposed to be covering right now, will be four seasons long. George R. R. Martin revealed this recently, so it's pretty reliable. But also, they're turning the show into more of an anthology show. Ryan Condal, the showrunner, said that one of the other shows that they referenced when they were in the writer's room was The Crown, which is like an anthology type of series, which jumps between different versions of the actors as they get older through time. But also they plan on taking it one step further and using the show to cover other major time periods in the Targaryen history. Like they'll jump to the past and do Aegon the Conqueror and the Conquest of the Seven Kingdoms, or they'll jump forward, do the Blackfyre Rebellions, or even later do Tales of Duncan Egg. You get the idea. In fact, the showrunner Ryan Condal said that he was actually developing a Tales of Duncan Egg show that was completely different for HBO before George R. R. Martin found him and hired him on to do this House of the Dragon series. They still plan on calling the show House of the Dragon because it's still about the Targaryen family just set during a different time period. So when we get to season five, that'll be like the different time period, whether we go to the past and do Aegon's Conquest or the future and do some other event. And that's how you get 10 to 12 seasons or whatever of House of the Dragon. It's just them using different actors during different time periods, which is also how they get around the problem of having to pay the actors like a million dollars per episode, because that's what happens when shows run for like more than seven to 10 seasons. By the end of the main Game of Thrones series, all the major actors, like the biggest ones, were earning crazy money per episode. Number three, House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 1 will probably begin pretty soon after the events of Season 1 Episode 10, like the next day, because as Rhaenyra said to Otto Hightower, the Red Keep, the Greens, would have their answer on the morrow. They ended with that reaction shot of Rhaenyra turning around all quite all pissed off learning about Lucerus' death, so obviously their answer on the morrow will be very different from what her answer might have been before that. The answer will be their retaliation for the death of Lucerus, like they will respond in kind with actions, not words. And the retaliation will probably be a combination of at least two major events, like one big scale massive attack, like a traditional declaration of war, where Damon pays off his earlier reference where he said he was going to take Harrenhal, like he said they needed to gain control of that and the Riverlands, as well as paying off the alliance with Grover Tully. The current Lord of House Tully that they kind of joked about a little bit because it's kind of a Sesame Street reference inside Game of Thrones. There's also a Kermit Tully that's around during this period of the timeline too. George R. R. Martin, big Jim Henson fan. Either way, them controlling this area of Westeros is critical during the Dance of the Dragons because it allows them to box in the Greens in King's Landing in the Crown Lands here. They already control pretty much the entire eastern seaboard of Westeros at this point. Number four, the more traditional big battle at the beginning of season two, like I said, the burning of Harrenhal. Daemon taking Harrenhal meant to be a big parallel for Aegon the Conqueror's conquest of the Seven Kingdoms. During the conquest, Harrenhal was like the first major castle that he took. 
it was the second battle, like it wasn't the first engagement. The first battle was actually in Goldtown against the Aaron's army after they made landfall at what became King's Landing in the Blackwater Rush. That's why it was called King's Landing, because it's where Aegon landed his army. The curse of Hall that they referenced during season one actually started right after Aegon burned the castle with Balerion the Black Dread. That's the reason why it looks so melty, because he burned it with Balerion's dragon fire. Previously, it was the biggest castle in the history of Westeros by far. It took Heron Hor over 40 years to build in the day. The day that he finished it was the same day that Aegon burned it. How's that for bad luck? That's why the specter of bad luck always follows Heron Hall throughout the years. Really good example of the curse of Heron Hall in present day during the main Game of Thrones series is during season two, Jack and Hagar goes around killing a whole bunch of people mysteriously, even though it was Arya that was naming people for him. The latest one we saw on the show was Harwin Strong and his father burning in Harrenhal. So Daemon burning Harrenhal with Vermithor, the other dragons, would be like the burning of Harrenhal 3.0. And you remember, now Lord Foot Kink, Laris Strong, now holds the castle. Now the curse of Harrenhal falls on him, so expect something really crazy, really bad to happen to him eventually. Eventually him getting his comeuppance. But number five, Lair Strong will probably be the new little finger of the show. They kind of positioned him that way during season one, too. And as such, he will probably have a similar arc to Littlefinger, like he'll survive till much later in the run of the show. So even though you have this giant curse of Harrenhal, Lair Strong, like Littlefinger, will probably survive through all the major battles the next few seasons, till near the end, continuing Littlefinger style to influence events and do increasingly messed up stuff. If you thought the feet stuff was weird during season one, you have no idea some of the messed up stuff he's going to get up to the next few seasons. But ultimately, that's just going to make the payoff of his death that much more satisfying when it does eventually happen much later. Much more satisfying, I think, than the way that they paid off Littlefinger's death during Game of Thrones. Number six, the other major WTF moment where the Blacks retaliate against the Greens in and around House of the Dragon season two, episode one, will probably be blood and cheese. Remember, giving the Greens the answer on the morrow. One part of that is the traditional declaration of war with the burning of Harrenhal 3.0. The second major one will probably be Damon's own personal retaliation using Miseria to hire Blood and Cheese to kill a child for a child, an eye for an eye, as payment for Lucerus's death. As Aemon said to Lucerus, a debt is owed, but this time it'll be Damon going at the Greens. Revenge killing one of the Greens' children in retaliation. So remember, a big part of the Dance of the Dragons is going to be Rhaenyra and Alicent trying to avoid atrocities like this, as much fighting as possible, and everyone around them on both sides doing the exact opposite, trying to burn the realm to the ground. The funny thing the showrunners have said about Daemon, though, is that like, oh, you know, he doesn't want to burn the entire realm. He just wants to burn all the greens and put all their heads on pikes. And in doing that, a bunch of the realm will burn. The whole idea is that neither Alicent nor Rhaenyra can totally control what each of the people on their sides can do. Even though it seems like they have a lot of authority, they're meant to be like the most powerless people within their camps. Like Daemon will do whatever Daemon wants to do. Otto Hightower and Aemond are going to both do whatever they want to do, as well as Aegon II, who is now king and probably isn't going to spend a whole lot of time listening to what his mother says, like the second coming of Joffrey, even though technically he comes before him in the timeline. Remember, Cersei could not control Joffrey. It'll probably be a similar situation with Aegon II and Alicent. This is one of the big ideas with Alicent and Rhaenyra throughout the entire Dance of the Dragons. They want it to feel like no matter how much Alicent wins, no matter how much Rhaenyra wins, both of them always wind up losing, ultimately. Like during season one, it seems like Alicent wins everything that she wants, except she ultimately loses because Lord Feet now has all this power over her. You have Daemon choking out Rhaenyra, even though she's just put on Jaehaerys's crown. She's just become the Black Queen. You'd think she'd be the most powerful person in the room, but no, that's actually Daemon. I don't want to get into too many spoilers for the blood and cheese stuff, but if you've read the books, you know kind of what's going on. Eye for an eye, child for a child. One of the Greens will die tragically, probably in episode one, maybe episode two, we'll see. Number seven, we'll see the rest of the dragons that Damon mentioned in episode 10, starting with Vermithor, who they already teased. Damon isn't going to change his dragon from Caraxes to Vermithor or anything like that. He was just summoning Vermithor. And the song he was singing to it was a Valyrian lullaby. He was trying to coax Vermithor out. When they zoomed the camera in on their eyeballs on the reflections, you could see his hand reaching out to touch his snout. Vermithor will probably be ridden by one of the other dragon seas, probably Hugh Hammer, who's a Targaryen bastard born on Dragonstone. He's a normal soldier working in their army currently. The reason you didn't see him in season one is because they only elevate him to a more important position of dragon rider once the actual dance begins, and they need all the dragon seeds, all the dragon riders they can find for all the riderless dragons. Vermithor breathing all that flame too, like extended flame breathing sequence, probably also foreshadowing for Daemon taking him to Harrenhal with Caraxes to burn the castle. 
because Vermithor is the biggest dragon in Westeros next to Vagar right now, so he's a huge asset metaphorically and literally for them. Vermithor is a male dragon who used to be ridden by King Jaehaerys until his death. He's just been riderless on Dragonstone ever since then. Number eight, the other dragons are Vermithor's mate, Silverwing. She was the dragon ridden by King Jaehaerys' wife, Alysanne, who's also been riderless on Dragonstone since Alysanne died. They lost Arax when Vagar killed Lucera, so they're down one dragon right now, but we'll also probably see Taraxes, Baby Joffrey's newest dragon that they reference. But remember, Baby Joffrey, still very small, even though he's not technically a baby anymore. Taraxes would be even smaller than Arax, and Arax is like the smallest dragon that we've seen so far. So I don't think Joffrey is going to be doing a whole bunch of fighting during season two. We'll see Bela's dragon, Moondancer, and we'll probably see at least some, if not all, of the wild dragons. There are three of them. It's Sheepstealer, she's eventually ridden by Nettles, then there's Cannibal and Grey Ghost. There are a couple dragons that we saw during season one already that will come back during season two, like Sea Smoke is a good example, Laenor Valerian's dragon. Lots of theories about Laenor secretly coming back pretending to be a Valerian bastard, just under a different identity, like, no, 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 I'm not Laenor, I'm a totally different person. Maybe that'll happen towards the end of the Dance of the Dragons. There are other dragons that Daemon didn't mention that he and Rhaenyra's children, Aegon and Viserys, eventually ride, but they're still very, very small babies right now, so they probably won't claim dragons for a long time. Maybe we'll see them in the final season if they cover the later events of the show in the aftermath of the actual Dance of the Dragons. Number nine, sort of connected to that idea, the other major revelation that the showrunner and George R. R. Martin revealed, if you didn't realize it before, that there won't be any more major time jumps on the show during the Dance of the Dragons. For the most part, the rest of the Dance of the Dragons, however many more episodes that runs, will be the current actors that you see now. Right now, all the major children, like Jacaris all the way up to Aegon II, who's technically like the oldest of that generation, are meant to be between the ages of like 17 and their early 20s. By the end of the Dance of the Dragons, they'll only be like a couple years older. In number 10, the big WTF cliffhanger at the end of season 2 will probably be either the reveal of all the dragon seas, like in season 2 episode 10, Damon will roll out all the dragon seas riding all their dragons, preparing for like the next major conflict, like let's prepare to burn them all. Or, small chance, they'll end season 2 episode 10 with Rhaenyra sacking King's Landing in a big parallel to Daenerys sacking King's Landing at the end of the main Game of Thrones series. Like, Season 2, Episode 10 will literally end with a very similar moment to the end of Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 6, except this time, this time, Rhaenyra will enter the Iron Throne room and actually sit on the Iron Throne, and they'll cut to the credits. It's not like somebody's gonna bum rush her from behind and stick her in the back before she sits on the Iron Throne. She'll sit on it, they'll cut to credits, and then we'll pick up in Season 3, Episode 1 with the Greens' retaliation for them sacking King's Landing. Because the whole idea is the end of season one is meant to be the Greens basically stealing the Iron Throne from Rhaenyra. Wouldn't it be a big payoff at the end of season two if Rhaenyra steals it back from them? And they really, really want you to see the parallels between Rhaenyra and Daenerys. Like, they look the same already. They have the same hair braids. They even used Daenerys' music when she was flying in on Cyrax at the beginning of season one. Both of them are rebels, and they both quoted the phrase that they would upend the old ways and start their new order, saying, I will create a new order. Here's the other side of that coin, though. Both Rhaenyra and Daenerys said neither one wanted to be Queen of the Ashes when dragons go to war, everything burns. But look at what happened with Daenerys. So much collateral damage. The maesters, the small folk, all thought her a tyrant after the fact. The maesters even recorded that Daenerys went mad like her father, the Mad King. During House of the Dragon, much earlier in the timeline, the realm had just experienced Maegor the Cruel's reign before King Jaehaerys. In fact, they referenced Maegor the Cruel at the beginning of Episode 1. So that would be the metaphor that Rhaenyra wants to avoid, like everyone, the small folk, thinking her, the next coming of Maegor the Cruel. So the big question is whether or not the realm is going to remember Rhaenyra fondly or think of her as the next Maegor the Cruel. Because it seems like she wants to burn them all now. I know there's a lot of other questions about characters like Aemon, what is he going to do next when he comes back to King's Landing? Is he going to tell Alicent, oh, I just wound up killing my nephew on accident. I think I started the actual Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of the Dragons. Oops, my bad. I do have a bunch of separate bonus videos planned for other big characters, so I'll talk more about Aemon during that video and the other characters during those. So if you have any big questions or things I didn't address in this video, just write them below in the comments and I'll try to add them to those bonus videos. Everyone click here for my full House of the Dragon episode 10 finale video and click here for all my other House of the Dragon videos. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.